is there to farm good players <laughs> and someone's gonna come and buy them out so uh you can't really hope too much from them, but what we can hope for is a potential new star to be born uh mm -hmm. during this series i like that i like that also i think it's just about china is such a hyper competitive region where the more mm -hmm. up and coming players, if they wanted to just stay together and persevere through maybe losing to these better teams, China isn't one of the regions to do that in, I think, compared to maybe something like Eastern Europe. Five seconds yeah, remaining. That is uh, very true. I think uh, all these teams, especially when I, from the time that I played there in 2012, 13, like these guys train so freaking hard every single day. They play like sometimes even three best of twos, four best of twos even, depending on the tournament. Like they don't even play pubs during that time. Now I think it's a bit more common to play pub games, but it's all about the team environment. It's all about hanging out with one another. And that's why like they built this kind of uh, environment where it's always so competitive. That's a really interesting approach to it. Five seconds remaining. All right, so we're going to start so, things off with this draft with the Hoodwink coming out for the side of SAG. Meanwhile, Team Master, they're going to grab the Wyvern and the Puck. Yeah, there's nothing unusual coming out of the draft right now. Winter Wyvern and Puck are some of the two most contested heroes in first phase. Hoodwink is just a really excellent utility hero. She gives vision, she sets up for kills on side lanes. She has insane burst damage and a break. I think the Death Prophet following up with the Hoodwink is a bit more something unorthodox than what we've seen yesterday. Yeah, Death Prophet was yes. not a popular hero yesterday. Team mm -hmm. We did see that one game with the Slark, though. <laughs> wasn't it? Wait, wasn't it an offlane Death Prophet or was it? Force? It was, yeah. Okay. It was an offlane Death Prophet with a Slark 5. Using <laughs> to not forgetting this one easily. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to let that one go. But yeah, I, I mean, looking at uh, like Death Prophet, some of the reasons why this hero gets picked up is to just to have that team fighting ability. Um, it's just like an, kind of like an anchor where you just pop the ulti, you can just run in with your team or just hold your ground. That being said, though, I do feel like Winter Wyvern and Puck are great heroes against DP. Um, there's a coil factor. You can silence before she gets her spell off or you get the Winter Wyvern uh, using the Arctic Burn that does a lot of annoying percentage-based damage to a DP. You, you can make the argument DP has a silence against Puck, but it's not the easiest thing to hit. Mm -hmm. yeah, and of course, awesome. the obvious of exorcism being physical damage, which actually doesn't go through a cold embrace. But you do definitely don't want to be cold embraced on top of it, Death Prophet. But, you know, just a little added flair. I think Death Prophet is always going to be the crux of her team if she's a core, in the sense that if her ulti is off cooldown, you always have some kind of game plan to play for. You always have some kind of move that you're going to be looking to make. So it does add a little bit of clarity to a team's drafts, but I don't necessarily like it so much, especially with a hero like Hoodwink, because I don't really see the synergy there or what SAG are looking to play with their opening so far, if that makes are sense. You, are you saying they're not looking for the five-man swash? Uh, bush the, 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 the tree bush thing, shark. bushwhack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, got I, got, I got swashbuckle in my head for some. Into <laughs> five man silence, into yes. three spirit oh siphons. God. How do yep. you play into that? That's it. Oh wow, brood. That's that's actually a very early brood, I would say here, because you don't see the carry on the side of Aster. Plus, there's a puck already there, which is a really hard matchup for the brood mother. Yeah. Like throughout the game, you get coiled, you're just going to get killed off. Wind Ranger is arguably really good too, because you're always playing around trees as a brood and a bunch of spiders too. So the shackle is essentially going to hit every single time. It's a very good point. And of course, if you do get Winter Wyvern ulted as a brood mother with there all your is. spiders around, there's a setup. That's the count. That's the hard counter to the brood mother. Naga Siren can literally just sit under the tower against the brood farm with her illusions um at some point she's just gonna go into the jungle leave the illusions in the lane and that's gonna kill all the spiderlings it, mm -hmm. this is a very common Five counter these days to the brood agreed and i really like naga here versus dp as well because her ulti has typically been one of the best disengages in dota versus these high cooldown heroes like death prophet or terror blade so that's another added factor of why naga looks really good in astro's draft yeah i like that a yeah, lot that's a very good point that's a very under underrated point too. Um, I think I played 
a lot of pubs with T against Five TBs with a Naga on my team, and they never even think about that. They just want to fight straight up, feed. <laughs> you know, it's like you guys, you can just click your ulti, run away. You know, everyone wants to be a cowards. warrior. Yeah, carry players are <laughs> fighters. You know, if he if he pops metamorphosis, it's like a challenge. You know, it's like the olden days when they slap you with their glove to challenge you to. Yeah, that, it's not even. <laughs> listen, Nomad, that's not even like Team pub. Bad players it's my sometimes my teammates like i play in teams with i've had to you know emphasize don't fight just chill you know just pop to sleep run away we can take the fight again later it's a matter of honesty it's just then. built into carries exactly and then boom you get your blink dagger naga blinking into their terror blade and their axe mm -hmm. that's never <laughs> happened to you that's happened to me Ten seconds mm. but um yeah so SAG pick up Lion, which is not an unusual pickup versus Puck. Like when you are playing against the Puck, you do need some of that instant disable, like the Hex on Lion, who's traditionally, I think, the best support this patch versus Puck. So it does yeah. make sense, but I don't like the Lion Hoodwink support duo very much. I'm going to be very honest. It just seems. It's it feels a bit squishy and it's like that double range support duo, right? Like sometimes right. you like to have that melee support combo. I feel teams have sort of been branching away from that melee range support combo these days and focus more on like okay what which two supports can impact the game the most uh and in this situation this, like you said the lion pick against naga and puck is just so beautiful and i want to actually see this lion take more of like a position four role because he's going to need a lot of farm and with farm he can do a lot this game and it's not even against mm -hmm. naga and puck it's also against winter uh, windrunner and the winter wyvern like you can burst this heroes, um, you can go on the Wind Ranger before she uses her evasion. Just be able to burst her with finger. Like there's so much potential for design. I just wanna, I just wanna see him like with a lot of farm this game. And to, uh... You know what? I'll I'll agree to that. Lion as a four looks a lot better than a five in this game for sure. And to add to the um, the unfortunateness of these support duo on the side of SAG, to put it lightly, um, as I don't really like seeing Death Prophet when you don't have any save on your team. You know, I feel like this hero just feels so much better when you get like, you know, the Oracle, the Abaddon, just true <laughs> Shadow Demon. That's what I was. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you completely. That's that's what I wanted to talk about. So mm. when you look at the support duo of a Hoodwink and Lion, it's a bit one dimensional. Like, what are they offering the team? They're offering um, pick off potential. They're offering disable, and they're offering very heavy burst damage. Obviously, Lion does more in the way of Disable than a Hoodwink does. But then you look at the support duo of Aster and you have the map mobility and the remaining. the stun in Wind Ranger versus the disengage ulti or Five the engage ulti remaining. and the save of Winter Wyvern. The support duo on Aster is just much more flexible in what they can do. And not having a save with Death Prophet makes her a lot scarier to play. And speaking of picking the same thing, they literally just got Leshrac, who's <laughs> More like Leshrac another Death copy Prophet. of Death Prophet. <laughs> so they got two tower taking team fighters with no saves on their lineup, alongside two burst damage heavy disablers on their supports. And this Brood Mother is not an anchor for this team at all. I mean, he can tech, uh, she or she he I, I don't even know. Brood Mother can buy Brood team mother. aura what? items. <laughs> Brood mother, <laughs> dude. I mean, it's a play. I always go through this dilemma, right? You know, the the carrot, the hero is like, you know, has a gender, and then the player himself has a gender, right? So that's true. It's that's like, true. Okay, okay. I, I always get myself confused. I need to be more consistent with that. I would have to agree. Well, but yeah, the bird would you're bailing yourself out of that one. Okay, purple. I, I, actually, I don't even know who bird's gonna be. They haven't picked yet. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. Uh, I don't even remember what I was going to say anymore. Go ahead. Take it away, guys. <laughs> well, let's take it away. I am big, big agree with Leshrac is another soft death prophet type hero. Like They're just kind of repeating heroes and not rounding out their draft on the side of SAG. Whereas like Aster just close up their draft by getting that low cooldown, initiating offlaner who can go to Brood's lane and just handle her if she starts to become out of control. So I'm very, Ooh. very... Very astro favored, I think. Yeah, they are draft. doing something interesting. They're running XXS as the Naga off lane, and they're running Monet as the Axe carry. So, but it was a switch up there. I'm very interested to see what the theory behind that is. Any ideas quickly mm -hmm. before we throw it over? I think, I think that should just confirm. Uh, sorry, go ahead, David. Uh, you, you go ahead, you go ahead. I think for me, that just confirms that they did pick the Naga Siren purely to just disengage from the Death Prophet. 
Mm, yeah. Very nice. I, I I was actually thinking that uh, they just covering both silence right now. Yeah. In terms of uh, where the brood mother's going now, when they, these players don't know who's gonna pick the Leshrac, who's gonna pick the brood, there was a very small chance the Leshrac could be off lane, and the brood could have been in the safe lane. And mm. I think just like picking this axe and Naga like this just just makes it uh, very easy for them to be able to deal with the brood regardless of uh, where the brood's gonna go. So. I think they have a very solid lineup as well. I would have to go with Aster here, um, but there is a small potential of snowballing from the side of SAG. So let's see if they can do something with it. Yeah, when you have that much damage, there's always a potential of just, uh, you know, heroes dying, but I don't think Aster are going to let that happen. But let's find out what happens. Let's get into this game. It is Aster versus SAG. And to bring you the action, we've got b -Kyop and his partner, I know you were hoping I was going to say black, but unfortunately, it's Mo Farah. Take it away, boys. <laughs> from father to son. Where's now the hate? Where, where did that come from, Nomad? What's that about? Oh. <laughs> just, just can't hire the right host these days. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is day two. <laughs> come on. Yeah, you wait for you wait for the finals. No, day, day sixteen. I'm gonna be on Here the floor are. like strangling him. It's gonna be, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm ready. I'm ready for the banter. I live for the banter. Thirty seconds. Fine. Well, let's take a look here. Aster, Sag, Sag with a little bit of a new lineup in terms of players, which is pretty interesting i would say you've got two guys from serenity who are back together in xcj and zyd but i'll get a little bit more on that as they go after ms and he should be dead here with the illusory orb power shot in borax gets the kill on ms and it's already first blood for aster I, I just wanted to point out towards the end of that draft obviously they picked up the naga right right and we were like oh that's, that's a and that's a panel was saying it looked like a really great game for the naga um, I've been watching some people play this as a three in pubs as well, and it, it looks really good. You know, you can go for this relatively early pipe against the Lesh, which feels great. Um, there's so many like different utility items you can build. So I, I'd be interested to see um, like what item progression comes out from the Naga. Yeah, the, I think the axe, the axe last pick just like rounds off their draft so well. When at some point in this game, axe is gonna like BKB call man to somebody, and they. Like the panel was saying, they don't have saves, so I don't really know what they do. <laughs> like it, it feels like they're very vulnerable come team fights. Like yes, they have the burst damage coming from the lion. They have some pushing potential, especially when they've got themselves the exorcism. Ooh, lion getting low, trying to run. Monet, can you find this final shot? No, he gets juked. Although Lanham, with no Arctic burn, won't be able to get this kill onto the lion, who will pop that south. So, just going back to what I was talking about earlier with ZYD and XCJ, you've got two guys here with a, a boatload of experience in terms of getting to TI, having that fantastic season in that TI8 year. I'm interested to see how ZYD plays because he hasn't played for a team since uh, the Chinese team known as You Know Who. Um, it was a small team that had the likes of Blink and Ice Ice. Obviously, everybody knows Blink, everybody knows Ice Ice. Uh, and and it, it's a lot of experience there for ZYD, who I thought was going to be similar to someone like, I don't know if you remember ASD, a young mid who had a lot of potential to really make a name for himself. I, I don't know if this SAG squad is where ZYD is going to come back into the scene and really make a statement. It, it's especially a tough task going up against White Album, a former SAG star who used to go as DD back then. And he's on his best hero right now. White Album has really dominated with Puck throughout the year. And it will be interesting to see if ZYD can kind of hold his own in a matchup like this. If there's one player that can play against Slash, though, it's going to be White Album. That guy knows Slash. Yeah. He really does. And he's just been on top of it. White Album really impressed early on in the DPC. And it's just... He's been pretty consistent in what he's given to Aster throughout the year. I, I, I mean, it was frustrating, you know, I think a lot of people had Aster to do really well, right? You know, the, the number one China team coming into the major and stuff as well. And then I think White Album in particular had a, a really difficult major. He, um, he struggled quite a lot. So it, it's like I was saying yesterday before their first game, Aster, that I, I think 
th they are still a really good team, obviously, but it's, it's just frustrating that they can't almost take that next step, you know? Yeah, Aster is a team full of guys who have really been in big positions quite often. I would say the guy with the least experience is, of course, White Album, but now he's gotten that experience throughout the year where you've got guys like XXS and Borax who have done big things, like one DAC. You've got uh, Monet who and Lanham who are leaders. Like This is a team that's well-rounded and you expect to get really good results. And when they flunk out of a major, like they, it's disappointing by a, by a big margin. You play two series and that's it. You're expecting way more from a, a roster like this. Yeah. But as long as they beat SAG, I want to see the Naga 3, dude. Oh, hang on. Yeah, good bushwhack. Power shot comes out, but it's not going to save Borax's life. MS will get the kill there. And Sun Goku, the artist formerly known as June, is going to be taken out by Monet, who's just diving the Tier 1 tower. And he's under here with... Pretty much no fear in his eye. Yeah, I mean, he's like 200 gold off the Vanguard now as well. So hopefully at some point, Lanham can, you know, get into the jungle, make some stacks for this axe. Um, you're looking towards uh, Borax making stacks on the Ancients as well, because Thieber mentioned this yesterday when you have this Wyvern and axe combo. Obviously, you take the Ancients so quickly. I don't even think he necessarily needs the heal, but it is much quicker. White Album taking a lot of damage in this mid lane. XCJ and XXS down towards bottom with Borax. I don't know if many people know this. I, I'm pretty sure it's been spoken about a lot, but Borax changed his name, or Bobica changed his name to Borax, and it's um, it's actually like a, an honor to Jerax. Which is, which is really cute. I love that. Yeah. When, like, when these professional players, like, change their names based on other professional players, I think it is, it is really nice. You know, like when Zion and Arteezy have their like pub names as each other and stuff, and also, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> you know, well, and when I change my name to Mofar, it's always you know, it's, uh, <laughs> same thing. Like we, are, like I said, professional players become. <laughs> <laughs> Son Goku just not getting a lot out of this uh, top lane. He's twenty one one, and and it feels like he is just getting pressured so heavily right now, whereas Monet is getting away with everything. He's got an early Ooh. Vanguard. He's going into the boots. He's ready to go. Ooh, her spike coming in over mid. They've got the Hex to land it up with a stun from ZYD, but White Album surviving. Is he going to get out of this one now with a Dream oh, no Coil? Way. They've leashed him up. Power shot in on a ZYD who thought he was going to get himself a kill on a White Album. He doesn't die either, which is a little bit of a surprise. But that, that felt like get it was anything a kind of dry it. kill, didn't it? Yeah. That's, that's really unfortunate. Line up the stuns, have the damage, Pulse Nova in. But didn't get the kill on a White Album, and White Album just skirting to the outside of those trees, able to walk himself out. Does he just catch waves now on XXS? Or Brood? Yeah. Looks like it. And this is the thing, when you're playing this uh, DP, it's kind of like, oh, do I go and chase the Naga illusions around to try and stop them cutting waves, or... Right. Do you like this Death Prophet in the safe lane? Oh, shackle. Power shot with the Shackle, and now they've got the call to follow it up. Lanham with the Arctic Burn. They're going to try and stay on top of this brood, and they <laughs> should happening? be able to do so. It's not how bridges work. Although, Insatiable Hunger, not going to be enough. God, I hate Brood's map. Movements and things. It's ridiculous. Shackle lands. And there's another one. Orax getting credit for that second kill. As XCJ and MS try to move over to kill off XXS for the TP in time. And he's gone. And now MS will make a movement towards the top lane. Where Not I'll invading. assume Brood's going to go towards bot. Axe comes and takes away the big stack. Uh, the big camp stack, I should say, for the Lush. He gets a chip vest as well. Alright, this game's over. Let's just call it, guys. It's the best feeling when you get the neutral item drop you want. Yeah. It's like fairy trinket on all these int mid heroes as well. You're like, alright, cool. Nice. Got the signs only level three. Yeah, I mean the supports. Oh, there's a exorcism been top for the pop then. 
This one goes. I mean, came back to her top. They're trying to get the tier one and get something out of the map. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say this is the one thing that SAG are really good at. Um, but they, they do have these cores that can push buildings and things. And if they get ahead, like, they do have really good aggressive potential, especially from their supports that can roam around the map well. Drew Cool comes out with the shackle landing onto the Lashrak. They almost get a kill on a white album once again, but it's just not enough damage. And now Lanham got the Winter's Curse if he wants to just throw it to get the control on XCJ, who will scurry into the trees and get across the mid lane. No commitment from White Album there. And they do let that Hoodwink survive for now. Uh, this Lesh is not having a great time, is he? There's, there's a lot of action happening around this mid lane. You know, he misses the kill on the puck. All of a sudden, he gets turned on here as well. And this axe is really starting to pull ahead. And, and like we've said, if this axe has a good game, it's going to get to a point in this game where he gets like four items and he basically just kills whoever he wants on the map. Uh, this is a, a big difference in chemistry. And I say team, like team chemistry. Aster, they've been playing together for a long time. SAG have kind of made some roster moves, and these guys are getting used to playing with each other again. And this is so nice. Like, Mona, you see Mona in the top jungle at the moment. Is the Brood wants to take over Ooh. the top half of the map. Yeah, the Brood wants to take over the top half of the map and farm the camps that the Axe is farming. So he's trying to take away everything he can from them. Monet, is he going to survive? Is the Winter Wyvern going to get there in time? No. Ooh. Close. Good kill. A good way to invade, but now it's looking like the Hoodwink might die to Borax. He throws out the power shot, but able to scurry around those trees, play ring around the rosy wall. ZYD kills off XXS. It's all a Shrek getting a kill, getting himself on the board. No longer 0 1 and 0, but they will lose XCJ as well. Aster really, for the most part, have had. At least one guy or, or, or two guys across the river for what seems to be the entirety of the game at the moment. Middle tower is under and they should be able to secure something over mid, but the question is whether or not SAG are going to respond to this, and they'll show the TP. Also got this lion nearby. XXS inside the jungle. Oh. Winter's Curse to start it off with the Spider's Animal. A lot of damage coming out onto the Brew. They've got the Shackle to follow it up and the Power Shot from Borax. Easy kill there from the side of Aster. 7-3 with a 3k lead. Just 11 minutes into the game. Feels like a pretty good spot to be in if you're the dire side. And the question now becomes, how does SAG react? They're going to look to get a kill on Monet again, but they missed the Bushwhack. They've got the slow. They'll follow it up with the Earth Spike. Loading up the sharp shooter, and that will land. They've got the hex. They'll get the kill, and they'll take out Monet for the second time this game. Oh, yeah, great kill for SAG. I mean, every time they can find this axe, it, it really slows the tempo of the game down for Ashta. I mean, unfortunately for them, they also did lose a brood top, which is sad, and they're losing a little bit of HP on their bot, uh, on their mid-tier one. But I think every time you can kill this axe, they should feel good about it. This puck has 2.1k gold and he has Witchblade queued up. I'm just wondering whether he's going to commit to it or just go for the blink instead. Because they do have like some really squishy backlines that if the puck is able to get onto with a blink dream coil, they don't really have an answer. Mm -hmm. CYD getting taken out by Lanham. Hunter Wyvern securing that kill, and it's another one there for the side of Team Aster. And yeah, just like you said, he's going to go for that Blink Dagger. Sun Goku putting some pressure on the mid-tier one. They've got that glyph, so that'll hold up that push. As now you've got the movement speed here for XXS. He's going into a Meteor Hammer. He picked up that early Yasha. Things are looking pretty steady for the moment for Aster. All three of the top cores are on the side of Aster, and SAG need to find a way to react for the moment. Yeah, and when this Manta comes online, it's a little bit later than originally planned after the couple of deaths, but and it's still a really strong timing by the Axe. Hmm. 
So going Manta, you'll have the Blink Dagger from the Puck, so you can Blink at that Dream Coil, set up the Axe, maybe... I mean, you really have a lot of setup in team fight here from Aster. It's kind of disgusting. Exactly, because that's the thing. Sometimes when you play this axe, you really need to get the blink right to be able to set up for your kills and things. But because the puck has blink, because they have a wyvern, and because they have a naga with song, I mean, the radius of the sleep isn't as big as it used to be at level one, but it's still pretty good. You know, you have the shackle that can come through. Bushwhack charging up the sharpshooter. They've got the stone, but the shackle connects on both oh these heroes. God. They're for the meteor having to come down, but that's not going to land. They get the kill on the Lanham. Now they look over at Borax, and both will die on Aster. I think <laughs> they had a chance to turn it for a second. I thought Borax was going to just. Um... Oh, all the spiders are dead. Okay. Um, I thought Borax was just going to channel the. Sorry, use the shackle and then run away because it's not highly leveled enough yet to get the combo off. But like, he fully committed for the, uh, for the shackle hammer combo. <laughs> Dream Coil on a ZYD. That'll snap XCJ. He's nearby. Acorn Chop of the Bushwhack will stop this act from running forward. And ZYD will TP out. Oh, Son Goku. He's in some trouble. He's been ensnared, but he gets to the low ground and back onto the high ground on the other side of the river. And as is the same in movies as it is here, once you get across that river, you have found safety. Alana must be a bit careful here. Ooh. They are coming Boys over. the sharpshooter. Commits the Winter's Curse. They've got Monet to follow this up, as well as Borax trying to make his way in. The question is, do they want to commit? And at least for the moment, they don't. And they've got that Manta on Axe, looking for the Blink as well as the Shard to get that yes. combo fully ready to go. Yeah, and the fact they don't have the enemy mid tier one with a less than a DP on their team at 15 minutes is a bit worrying, isn't it? I mean, the die have so much wave clear with the Puck, the Wind Ranger, and then there's these Naga illusions as well. A little hesitant from SAG to like commit that exorcism. They used the top, they got that top tier for one, but since then it feels like MS has been more hesitant to really full out commit and push with it. That's a cool, that's a weird argument. I haven't seen this from three before, where you go for hammer, then he's going straight Manta second item. I mean, obviously the Manta's really good up against the silence and the DP and things, right? But I thought he would go like more utility heavy. But, like, yeah, because he picked up the Yasha first and then went into the hammer, so. Oh, Interesting okay. build from a three. That's a bit weird. Uh, it, uh, yeah. I mean, there's no, pop, no problem in it. I mean, we've talked about this already a lot this tournament that. You know, they effectively have three position twos again on their team, kind of. But, I mean, they are a bit more farm intensive, their team, but even so. It, it, it kind of looks like Aster's team on paper should be super greedy. You see Naga, you yeah. see Axe, <laughs> and, and, and you see Puck, but it hasn't felt like they've overwhelmed the farm of the map. Look over mid and... They've got the root and now the Winter's Curse to lock up the Lashrac after getting this kill on a Son Goku. But they don't follow this up to go for a plus one. I don't know if they needed the Winter's Curse, but why not use it? Finish off that kill. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't think they would have got it without the Winter's Curse. So, But like you say, you, you might as well just make sure, you know, finalize the kill because food. <laughs> one of the most annoying One hammer, Dota, two hammer. So. <laughs> Exxon on the Winter Wyvern. They've got themselves the Waning Rift as well as the Shackle. That's going to connect onto the line. They should have a kill here and will. So that's the second one. Sharpshooter from XCJ really doesn't do much. It's nice. They're going to bring the Broodmother back mid. Oh, Stun lands on Alanum. Can they get the kill into the Winter Wyvern? Yes, they can with Son Goku adding into the fight. It still feels like poking prod from both teams and not a full commitment just yet. Yeah, they're kind of staring each other down and just throwing their, uh, their wave clears, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. It's nice to see Borax playing like a different um, Wind Ranger this time, right? Where well, yesterday he went like Maelstrom into MKB, and this time he yep. goes Meteor Hammer first. It's important to be able to, you know, flex up depending on what the game priorities are and what the needs are from your hero. And Borax is a very versatile four. Um, not only just in his hero pool, but in how he builds each hero. And he's very good at being adaptive to the situation some we see sometimes fours just kind of play the hero the way they've played the hero whereas borax i think he is very good at reading a situation god this axe hero is gonna start to blow up soon 
when he gets the shard at minute 20, I mean, his farm speed just goes through the roof. You know, his kill threat goes through the roof as well. We're down blink call. That's the debut of the blink. They'll get the call out onto the hoodwink with a shackle follow up and a calling blade to dunk on him. And I think that's probably going to be the mid tier one. I don't think they look to defend it now with the hoodwink death. Oh, nice DD top just outside the Roche pit. That's so interested. As is tradition. Oh. Right now, we're getting the kill there on a lion. Dream Coil used, and he's got himself 3 0 and 4. They found MS. Fuel's up into the air, but that's setting up Borax for a shackle. Meteor Hammer's a plenty. <laughs> and then we'll get a quick kill onto this Death Prophet. ZYD, XCJ, they come over looking for something, but I don't know if you want to fight into that. It's just really awkward for them to start fights right on the Radiant side. The only real yeah. initiation they have is like Bushwhack and Impale. So, I mean, they have a Yules on the left, but I'm sure he doesn't really want to use it for initiation. It's, it's really awkward for them to get into fights, especially when you're playing into like this Wyvern as well. Naga with Song. Shackle connects again. They've got the Earth Spike, Meteor Hammer coming down, and that's the Acorn Shot, Winter's Curse. That hits on a two. They've got the Sharpshooter still going. That's going to hit into the Axe. We'll pop the Manta. The Meteor Hammer hits on a bolt below the track, as well as the Brood. Another call from Monet with the Shackle connecting on a ZYD. Son Goku survives as he weaves his way through the pit, and it's another one of those fights that we've had throughout this tournament where they go back and forth and nobody dies. Oh, yeah, that was really nice for us. You can see, like, they're, they're trying to read and adapt as the fight goes on, right? where they realize that if they haven't committed and killed the brood relatively quickly, they just need to chill, right? Don't force the fight too hard. You know, if they don't get the brood, you know, it is what it is. It's fine. Because, you know, less experienced teams there probably would have just committed all in for the brood and potentially had it turn around back in their faces. Right. It's interesting that Axe isn't committing to buying this shard just yet. Quick kill there on XXS. I mean, unless Aston uh, decides to take it four versus five, I think, yeah, what a, what a good play by SOG. There's the shard. Uh, do they have the ability to? Winter's Curse is on cooldown for 25 more seconds, so it's tough. It's a tough ask to try and get in on the pit. Oh, they see XCJ on the hoodwink as well. I'd be really surprised if they try and fight this. I think you just try and hold it out. Yeah, they're going to go for the pickoffs instead. They'll get the Lion, Roche is low, the buyback's in, they can't get into the pit just yet. And there's Roche down, and the Aegis into the hands of ZYG with the BKB being popped by MS. So now he's hit by the Shackle, he doesn't have a BKB to work with. The Blink Call, the Waiting Rift, the Sharpshooter comes in, but the Calling Blade is there on an MS. And they're going to jump forward looking for more. They've got the Dream Coil down, but it's a stun on a remote to two to oh, heroes here on the side of Aster. And they've got the Full Nova going, but there is the Cold Embrace. Lanham surviving for now, but he's stuck in the spot where he is in a lot of trouble. Borax, Lanham, they both fall two years down to the side of Aster, even though they lost MS. It works out relatively well for SAG. They're just missing that burst damage a little bit on Asta. Where, you know, if they all go on the same target at the moment, they can kill them, right? And they have good um, chain stuns and things with, like, the hammers, the nets, the shackles. But like, they don't kill heroes quickly enough, right? Oh, Axe. Call, landing, and... Brood? Surviving. He's so tanky, though, with the mech. With the pipe. And he's looking Greaves. Yeah, he's going to be incredibly difficult to kill. Yeah. 6k lead for Aster. Still the Aegis, though, in the hands of this little Shrak. I want to see if SAG go for something a little bit more brave, holding on to this second life. Good for the Naga Siren, going pipe after this Manta, so back towards utility. And they want to go again with the Sages on the Lesh. They want to keep the aggressive plays up. 
Yeah, and he's going back for the Radiant's pipe now on the Naga. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the old Naga eggs where it would heal with the soul? Yeah. I, I missed that. I thought that was S tier. It, what? Okay. Well, the problem was Naga wasn't really a support, right? So. No, but I did think like what it did was S tier. It was fun. I guess the situation in which you get it isn't exactly S tier though, right? Because I mean, it didn't really fit yeah. what you were doing with that hero. Exactly. I and mean, the new Nagarags can be really good. That's right, because you can have the BKB piercing and snare and it goes through sleep as well. So it's really good against certain heroes, but... Uh... Winter's Curse. That's going to lock up two. They've got XXS with the Insane follow up onto the line. They get the kill on a one. Another look over at XCJ. The shackle doesn't connect. What? And now XCJ gets the bushwhack over. They land the stun. They'll look for the song. The sharpshooter in the cold embrace. That'll save Borax, uh. but it's still not enough. Son Goku over to the other side. They've got the waiting rift. That's going to hit onto this broodmother who's trying to look for a kill onto the winter wyvern. Phase shift over to the side. White album. Silence. Can't get on the run. The bushwhack lands, but they've got the code embrace once again. However, the stun's going to be right there and ready for White album, who goes into the phase shift, looking to lose your orb and get back towards Lanham and will blink out just in time. They're just such a strong five man unit on SOG at the moment. Like, they have really good utility from the brood. This Lesh is just leading the front line with the Aegis right now. Obviously, he has that second life, so Asta not really wanting to commit to fights. They're quite happy to just dodge and keep shoving lanes. You know, if you look at bot lane at the moment, it's, you know, really getting towards the tier two. And SAG are desperate to try and, like, force this big five on five right now so they can utilize this Aegis, but Astro aren't really giving it to them. Unfortunately, again, with the lion dying first, they just don't have a huge amount of catch. Oh, oh my gosh, god. XCJ getting ripped apart. Where did the lion go? Was there a... That's, that's like MS. a blink and you miss it kill. <laughs> Ooh, Yules. And the silence for the face shifts there. Link attempt White Album on the run and he'll escape. God, I hate Puck. <laughs> Looking for the call. Monet in deep doesn't get the call to land and they've got four heroes here. Almost the fifth is White Album was looking to TP onto the creep, but stops it. Webs down, Sun Goku oh, coming over, and they'll look for the line. They've got the Coing Blade to get the kill on a one at least. They're going to have the Hoodwink back into the fight, so XCJ, he'll try to get in with a TP over to the tier two. Monet in between both CYD as well as Sun Goku. They've got the Battle Hunger out on the Lashrak, who's continuing to chase on a line. They land the Bushwhack. That's going to be a kill to the Witcher Wyvern, but now they've got themselves the call as well as the Ensnare coming through. Meteor Hammer, Borax on the low ground. That's going to land onto the Brood Mother, and now it's the Exorcism will get a fight, but there's the Ejection Gourd as they'll Are they throw themselves with a song. And maybe leave. Meteor Hammer not going to be on the money. They've got themselves the Witcher's Curses, the Bushwhack, as well as the Exorcism doing a lot oh, of damage shackle. here on XXS. They've got the Shackle. They have the connection. They get the kill to Sun Goku. They'll take out MS. That's two heroes there without buyback. XDJ, he'll be next. Down goes the Hoodwink. The Squirrel is no more. And now it's a 10k lead for the side of Team Aster. What a well played fight. I honestly, when they popped the song, I really thought they were just using it to try and bail, but. Yeah, like, as the Observer says, that actually did so much damage in the fight, but... The fact they managed to turn that fight with the with the song, into the curse, into the call, into the shackle... I mean, the Radio just don't have an outplay to it. Oh god, burst damage on a Lanham. They at least get the kill here onto the Winter Wyvern. But as we spoke about on day one, Mo, it only comes down to one thing, and one thing only. <laughs> that is true. It's, it's second racial or nothing. <laughs> yeah. You either get it or you don't. <laughs> you either win or you lose right there. Every time. Is he getting BOTs on the X? I think he is, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, fe it's felt like ZYD and Son Goku have really been the leaders of this game so far for SAG, despite the fact that they're down 10k. Like, I haven't really felt the presence of MS. I don't know if it's has something to do more so with just the Death Prophet fitting in this lineup or him on the Death Prophet and how comfortable he feels with a hero like that. I mean Yeah, I know what you mean I know what you mean. I mean the the Hoodwink and the Lion have such a difficult time this game because of the puck, right? They're always under threat from just being blown up from hundred to zero. 
because he's decided to build a Dagon and it's miserable to play against. So you have to be really careful with your positioning. And he's got the Aeon Disc um, on the puck, but obviously waiting to be able to assemble it for the first time usage, having locked the Vit Booster. Just gotta remember the key. Don't want it to stay locked. Yeah, I mean, people are usually pretty good with that. They're like so quick at just assembling it when they need to. Yeah. 25 seconds until Roche may respawn. We'll see how long or short that extra time will be. Is SAG, they're holding the high ground. Borax coming in, the bushwhack's not going to land. SAG, off one kill, we're able to get Roche in the last time it was up. Can they find a pickoff again to maybe secure themselves positioning to do so once more? But it's a long Roche, so... 2 minutes, 15 seconds, so we have the second Roche available. They'll look over at XSS again, and it's just XCJ throwing Bushwax out in the hopes that he catches something. If you don't throw, you don't get, do you? You know, you gotta... if there's, well, if there's no tree, you don't get it either. Yeah, but that would... Imagine... You know, that doesn't make any sense. Why does it have... Oh, God, here we go. Blink call coming in. They're going to go after the Death Prophet. They've got a quick kill on an MS, and now they're going to look towards the back of it, but the stun hits as well as the Sharpshooter on a White Album. Now he's going to put together the Andis. They look over at the Brood. Sun Goku getting a little this bit loaded. It's no longer available. They get the call on a Sun Goku, taking out a second without buyback. And now, here's Lion. Here's Lashrak in some trouble. Triple kill here from One. Looking over at ZYD. Can he make it an Ultra? They've got the Insert to stop the TP. Meteor Hammer down, and there's the Ultra. Show me the Monet. Oh come on, man! That was. I want to. I was about to say that was awful. That was actually pretty good. I, I, I like Indian's that. <laughs> under um, yeah, I mean, they, they, this is what we're saying. Eventually, gets to the point in the game where the axe can just go in, and the radiant when he pops BKB, they can't do anything, right? They basically Indian's just have to accept that somebody's going to die, and then when the DP dies, they lose so much of their damage that they basically have to spend the whole fight running, and that's to have really yeah. good chase. Under attack. And it's off the back of SAG really wanting to make a play to go into the second Roche. Little do they know it's not even going to be up even in a fight like this after everybody's up for the side of SAG. And it just, it's a tough ask from SAG to get something done in a spot like that, especially after getting caught out in a position across the river. They could still do it, though. All they need is a pickoff in, into that second Roche, which is up in 30 seconds. They're going to have everybody available. Although Aster really didn't need to expend much in that last exchange to win that fight. It was on the back of calls, and it was on the back of just the control they had from the ensnares and the shackles. Like They didn't have to expend Winter's Curse to have that. And that's the thing, right? Like, even if that fight hadn't gone that well for them, the fact that they could just blink, call a DP, it's like you say, it's so low committal. Like, it doesn't matter, right? Even if it goes wrong. Whereas if Radiant want to take a fight, they kind of have to go all in with, like, exorcism, you know, commit with the Lesh fully just running into the fight. And without any saves, that's... It's such a high risk. We'll send the spiders over, throwing an acorn shot, and know that Roche is up, so... We'll see how the Radiant want to set up to potentially go for this second Roche. They'll start with pushing out top and mid. Dagon now level 5 for this puck, and the Ags picked up on this Naga Siren. <laughs> Lion and Hoodwink in tatters. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the Ags. Cool. Reduces the cooldown by 6 seconds, which is nice as well. Cast range by 400. Yeesh. All the spiders just going in one by one. Master, no. And this Roche is up. In probably the maximum a lot of time anyway, so both teams will assume it's there, regardless of whether or not they checked. I think they're, yeah, they're trying to make a loop around on Asta. They're smoked at the moment, so... MS is the one standing in front, though, and he can't be there. Oh my They'll God. get the kill out of the Death Prophet. It's almost immediate that they were able to pop this Death Prophet. Has buyback, but not even going to commit to it. They've got the Winter's Curse that's going to come through into Sun Goku. They get the kill on XCJ, and now both those heroes are going to buy back. XXS taking some damage from those tracks. Sun Goku coming over, and they find White Album. Only jaunts a little bit forward. 
And this puck gets the waning rift and gets that just a little bit of amount of space needed to walk away. Oh, a clean escape by uh, by Asta. I, I honestly thought they were going to lose people there when the two heroes brought back. I thought they were going to lose at least one. And they didn't even use the sleep. So I mean, the only thing they've used really is curse, right? And because Coil will yeah. be up again relatively soon. 15 seconds. I would say the lucky thing for SAG is the fact that Death Prophet died so fast, didn't even get exorcism off. And that's like two fights in a row, right? Where the DP just dies straight away. And it's the positioning from MS2. Oh, to be he's fair, just, it, was a, it was a good smoke by Asta, though. Yeah. Like, you don't expect them to come from that angle. But he's also on the low ground in that spot. Yeah, I mean, he, they, were, they were trying to get ready to group up to go to the high ground, but Asta were just quicker than them. Yeah. They made the move before SAG were ready. It happens. And they're going to go again. He almost uh, dodged the smoke there on Naga. That would have been a big play. For a second, I thought Winter Wyvern didn't get smoked, but it's just the cosmetic. Son Goku's standing forward, oddly enough. He gets hit by the Arctic Burn. I'm not sure why he stuck around. But commit the exorcism and the buyback coming out from this Broodmother, but Master are already out. You've got Godlike for Monet, 11, 2, and 7. They're ready to go back in if need be. You kind of want to make something happen with this exorcism. And I think down this much is the call just to try and go for Roche. It, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case anyway. Yeah, I thought SAG were going to try and force it there, especially with the Brood buyback and Exo popped. But I mean, what's going to happen is now Aster just wait out the exorcism and they're going to go again. And they're going to force the Roche. And if you give them the second Roche, then, you know, especially after using the buybacks already, then it's going to be really tough for you. XCJ trying to get the vision out of the hands of Aster. We'll take out that Observer War, but now they're holding the high ground. Power Shot's coming through, and this Great. is the Power Oops. Shot with the Shard, so it's global, and it makes it way easy to find some vision to make things happen. They'll look for the Sharpshooter, and that's going to come through in death. They get the kill on XCJ. He'll be gone for 73 seconds without buyback. And Aster, another pick and another retreat. Borax is just using these power shots constantly. As they, with that shard upgrade, really adding a lot. Yeah, it's pretty cool, the shard. You, not something that you build straight away. Obviously, you want like your utility on that hero more with the, like, the repositioning tools and things like Blink Force, if you're going that route. Um, but that's pretty good. Immortality. Puck will take the shard, so that will be the waning rift, extra damage, and the knockback. They've got the Aegis on Monet, who has just been pretty unstoppable. Oh, he has a moonshot. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just do what you want. Lanham has that blink dagger. He's going to go deep into the trees looking to get something. Son Goku, he's actually stepped up, but this is a deep ward placed by the Winter Wyvern that gives them some vision behind them. And it's already sniffed out by SAG. They get the hex out onto this axe. But is that really going to mean much? He's dealing with an Aegis here. Again, same thing. It's there's no risk, right? To it. Yes, Aegis, you just blink in. If you miss the call, whatever. It's what it is. You know, you get forced out. Just be a bit patient. You go again in a second. Oh, when this Naga gets Scardy, I mean, you're playing against DP Lesh. This is going to be ridiculous. You know, these two range cores that get 50% movement speed slowed are going to have a horrendous time. Stormcrafter. Timeless Relic. Always a good one to see drop, no matter what team you're on. Or no matter... Yeah, so one to see drop. Always nice. There's the Scotty for the Naga Siren. Ninja gear for the Naga or the Axe. It's pretty good. He could even and, give it to the And Scotty for the Axe. God. Oh, God. 
Okay, so he skipped the idea of AC, went for the Moonshard, and has now gone back for the Scardi instead. I don't mind that. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you want the BKB instead of the boss. When Call coming in, that's going to hit a Sun Goku. They've got Lanham looking to throw Winter's Curse out. Guardian Greaves, Sharpshooter comes in, hits out of the axe. They've got the break. Meteor Hammer down onto both the racks over mid. They haven't committed just yet. And again, it's the fact that they don't really have to commit heavily ever. Oh, the Lion. Find the Lion. He's got the end. They've got the Winter's Curse. That's going to lock up MS as well as Sun Goku. They've got the Science as well as the Dragon 5 to get the kill into the Lion. And now they're going to look for more. But ZYD dives in, and he is really looking for anything he can get his hands he's on. Just... The problem in, he's dropping it off. They get the kill on a ZYD. The Dream Cooler comes out into nothing. It's not going to matter at that point. They're without this little track for 86 seconds. No buyback. But that's call the thing, GG. Like, ZYD recognizes that they have to be able to kill the Wyvern. Because if the Wyvern doesn't die, it's so difficult to kill anybody else. And because they have a really big lack of catch, he has to go blink and basically just jump in and pray for his life that they don't counter initiate on him straight away before he kills the Wyvern. It's really right. difficult. So, I, you know, it looks really stupid that he's trying to make that play, but it's the best way of them winning the fight. Even if it's like this, no. a small percentage still. I don't think it looks stupid at all. It's just, you know, knowing the situation, like, it takes something has to do. Yeah. Well played by Asta, though. I mean, they were always in complete control of this game. It happens. Um, yeah. To, to SAG, but I think they had good moments in this game. I think that first Roche call where they got the smoke into the pickoff into the Roche was really good. But they could... They really did lack that catch and that ability to team fight. You know, they just have these three yeah. cores that want to be able to run in and deal damage. 